Welcome back to the Game Plan Episode 5. Noah Muller here. It's time to review a few NFL games from Week 8. I'm going to give my halfway through the year Super Bowl prediction, and we're going to check on the World Series status so far. Let's get into it. So starting off with our first NFL game, we have the Houston Texans beating the Indianapolis Colts 23-20 to in what I thought was a sloppy game, uh, to say the least. Um, Anthony Richardson playing terrible. He's now benched for Joe Flacco. Uh, Texans looked very sloppy, too. I didn't like the way they played. It doesn't look like a way that a playoff team would play. I get it's the regular season and the Texans will probably end up making the playoffs, but I didn't really like what I saw from anybody on the team. I mean, hence Stefan Diggs tearing his ACL. That was that was some bad news for the Texans because now Tank Dell is the number one wide receiver on the depth chart until Nico Collins returns soon. The stat line goes, Anthony Richardson going for 175 passing yards, one passing touchdown, one interception. Stroud going for 285 passing yards and a touchdown. Jonathan Taylor going for 105 rushing yards and a touchdown. And then Joe Mixon going for 102 rushing yards and a touchdown. Overall, pretty sloppy divisional game. Texans do get it done, though. So, I mean, no complaints. Second game and probably my game of the week, the Cleveland Browns upset the Baltimore Ravens in uh, the AFC North Divisional matchup. The Browns win 29-24. And what I thought was a great offensive game from the Browns, I mean, the offense has been so weak with Deshaun Watson all year, and then Jameis Winston comes in and just tears the house down. The stats go as follows. Jameis Winston going for 334 passing yards and three touchdowns, no turnovers. Lamar Jackson going for 289 passing yards and two touchdowns. Cedric Tillman, the receiver for the Browns, going for seven receptions for 99 yards and two touchdowns. Zay Flowers going for seven receptions, 115 yards. Overall, neither team really played bad here. This is a great game, start to finish. Some Browns players stepped up you didn't expect to, like Cedric Tillman right there, the rookie. And overall, this is just a great game, great get back for the Cleveland Browns. Great way to finally push forward with Jameis Winston and know to have confidence in your guy. Overall, great game for the Browns. Not a bad game for the Ravens. I know the divisional matchups are tough. Nonetheless, Browns take that one. Third game on the board is the Detroit Lions putting a ridiculous number on te uh, the Tennessee Titans' head. The Detroit Lions went 52-14. to And the funniest thing about this is their quarterback did not even have 100 passing yards. Stats go as follows. Jared Goff going for 85 passing yards and three passing touchdowns. Mason Rudolph going for 266 passing yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions. Jameer Gibbs going for 127 rushing yards and one touchdown. And then Calvin Ridley going for 10 receptions, 143 yards, and it's a really bad game for Tennessee. Great game for the Lions as they've been playing the entire year. The Lions honestly look like the best team in the NFL right now. I mean, hence the competition they're playing. But nonetheless, they're still playing a very competitive game. They beat the Vikings a couple weeks ago to give the Vikings their first loss. This right now is the best team in the NFL. The one thing I will say about the Titans is Mason Rudolph being in increases Calvin Ridley's value to another level. I mean... He's just getting the ball all game long. You see the 10 receptions. I get the yardage is good, but I mean the target share is just going to be amazing for Ridley. And for the last NFL game to review, the Los Angeles Chargers defeat the New Orleans Saints. Rattler does show improvement with Olave back in the lineup, but the Chargers win 26-8. to Stats go, Justin Herbert, 279 passing yards, two touchdowns. Spencer Rattler, 156 passing yards. Lad McConkey, the rookie for the Chargers, going for six receptions, 111 yards, and two touchdowns. Olave going for eight receptions at 107 yards. Overall, didn't expect much from the Saints. Honestly, this offense has been kind of weak with Spencer Rattler and obviously waiting for Derek Carr to return. Pretty good game for the Chargers. A good way to get back on track with the offense and Lad McConkey having his breakout game, which we've all been waiting for. We have some fellow classmates who can answer what the game of the week was. We'll be right back. Let's say the Ravens versus Browns, you know, the Browns um, have been pretty bad all season, but Jemias Winston um, starting for the injured Deshaun Watson, and he went off. He had three touchdowns, 
and the whole offense just looks better. They beat a good Ravens team, and now it's probably the game of the week. I think so. My NFL game of the week this week was the Commanders versus the Bears. You know, I thought it was a very good defensive game the whole time. Uh, DeAndre Swift got a touchdown, but at the end, Commanders clutched it up with a uh, Noah Brown catching the lucky Hail Mary. Scored off 18-15, so I would say that's my game of the week. Thank you. Back here on the game plan, and now I will be going over my top three players of the week for the NFL. At number three, we have Josh Jacobs going for 127 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns. Uh, just a great game from Josh Jacobs, what we've been expecting from him in Green Bay, especially against uh, the weak run defense he played in Jacksonville. And overall, just a great game for Josh Jacobs. Good way to get the running game on track with the amount of injuries Jordan Love is suffering. Number two, C.D. Lamb finally breaking out of his shell after getting that huge contract. Goes for 13 receptions, 146 yards, and two touchdowns. I mean, after seeing this, you just got to feed the guy. I mean, C.D. Lamb plays so good when he gets as many targets as possible. If you can find him open, you have to throw him the ball if you're Dak Prescott. Because when the ball goes to him... It always ends up in his hands somehow. At number one, player of the week, I have Jameis Winston, the, the Browns starting quarterback now, but backup, going for 334 passing yards, three touchdowns. I mean, first game tearing up a secondary like Baltimore's, it's really no joke. And Jameis Winston, first game back after being benched and just played amazing, especially with not having too many weapons after the Amari Cooper trade. Um, overall, just a great game for the Browns. Great game for Jameis Winston to get back on track. Next up, my upset for next week in the NFL. I mean, my last two upsets really should show that I shouldn't be making upsets because the Giants um, getting demolished by the Eagles, and then last week I picked the Bears over the Commanders, and we all saw how that went. I mean, Noah Brown catching a 53-yard Hail Mary to win the game. I mean, it's ridiculous. But my upset pick of the week is going to be the Cleveland Browns beating the Los Angeles Chargers. Currently, the Chargers are um, favored to win this game, but I have the Browns winning 17-14. to I just think this Browns squad, if they can play good defense like they pretty much have been most weeks this year, then they can pound the offense on um, the Chargers and win this game. Now to the NBA. The new New York Knicks squad, the starting lineup going Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, OG Ananobi, Macau Bridges, Carl Anthony Towns. I mean, this team looks dangerous. Um, they're 2-2 two and two so far. Um, some good games, some bad games. But, I mean, overall, the starting lineup on paper looks unbeatable. And Anthony Davis has been playing a stellar game for the Lakers. The Lakers have looked a lot better than last year. And, I mean, that really is contributed by Anthony Davis being healthy. Last topic of the day, moving to the MLB. The Dodgers up 2-0 on the Yankees. Dodgers win 6-3 in the first game, walk off Freddie Freeman Grand Slam. Second game, they win 4-2. Overall, the Dodgers are playing great baseball right now. It's going to be fun to see what the rest of the series holds in store. I have Dodgers in six personally, but that's just my opinion. That'll be it for the game plan. Next episode will be MLB as we'll go over the World Series and the final results as well as Week 9 of the NFL. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon on the next one.